Okay, so what's next is Luna 101. Uh, very basic Luna stuff. Okay. Just to make sure you know like about, about Luna. So in Luna, uh, how you define Luna is that you have this file called Luna.json file. It defines a Luna project. Just like you have a package.json file in your project. It defines a like, MPM package. So in what you see in Luna JSON is that you have like packages and it's uh, specified in, in Glob telling like where to look for packages within your Luna project and then you also can specify which npm client to use like either npm or yarn so packages is uh, specified in Glob so if you don't know about Glob you can look up for it so previously you, we, we specified the packages in widgets folder and utils folder right so in widgets folder and utils folder any folders that contain package or json will be considered as a package so if you run learner list which is the first command you are learning right now to list out all the packages within a learner project it will show you like email input address input and currency input for this case so uh, in package JSON, you can specify dependencies uh, among, like, the address input can use address util, for example, which is within your project. Uh. So, you, you can have a very complicated uh, dependency graph of your packages within a learner project. So, imagine if you have this, like, uh, like awesome input is requiring, uh, is dependent on class name and maybe happiness and like currency input is depending on currency util um, so just take a while to think about this like if you don't have a tool to help you like how are you going to npm link all the dependencies together and because we mentioned just now like publishing uh, sequence is important right so how are you going to like manage which package to publish first and which to publish later like and do it every time you have like something to fix right so the nice so yeah so the first command we are going to learn here is learner bootstrap learner bootstrap is uh, kind of like yarn install but you run it within a learner project so you can run it anywhere within a learner project you will just look up to the nearest uh, learner.json file and consider that as a learner project and when you run learner bootstrap if you will look at the package.js it will do this in every packages and then it will look at the package.json file and see what's your dependency and if the dependency you specify is not within a learner project it will try to npm install from npm and then nextly if the dependency is within a learner project but then and then the version satisfied then you will simulate the that package file to the node modules then if if it's there but the version doesn't match it will try to npm install from npm so imagine this scenario your email input is specifying like awesome input, email input and react so you know like react is external dependencies right so it will when you run learner bootstrap and when it's doing like executing it within this for this package you will install react from npm then in email input you look at email input is you email util sorry is like 0 0.6 but this is in 0 0.91 so it will sibling and then awesome input is at 0 0.5 0 0.55 per carat so it will sibling together yeah. so this is how learner bootstrap works and then another close sibling of learner bootstrap is actually learner link so for learner link is uh, simpler which is if dependencies is not in learner project it will npm install and then for else it will just sibling it 
So it doesn't care about the version is specified as long as it is within your project, you will just sim link them together. <coughs> Nextly, I'll just talk about the scope. So when you run Learner Bootstrap, you will bootstrap every package within the project. You run in every package. So if you want to specify only like one folder to bootstrap, you have to use scope. And the doc for scope is like here in this link. You can check it out. So for example, if you are specifying scope as like email autocomplete, you will just run bootstrap within this package, within this package itself only. And if scope can be treated as like a glob, so if you put email dash star, you will run in all the package that has email dash something. And the opposite of scope is ignore. So imagine if you don't put scope, it will just run in all packages, right? So if you have one package that you want to ignore, you can use ignore. And then you will run on all packages except that. Next is include filter dependencies. So this will look at the dependency graph. So it will run it will run in email autocomplete as well as all the dependencies recursively down like down to all the dependencies it requires. And the direct opposite of it is include filter dependence. So include filter dependencies and include filter dependence will run after is specified after the scope. So you can firstly scope of something to filter out a few packages and then this flag is to include all the dependencies or dependence of that filtered list. Lastly we have is uh, git ref, since git ref. So if you specify dash since equals like hate for example, you will filter only packages that has diff uh, on that, on that, uh, on that git reference. So this is what we use in our CI lab. So if we will change, we will check what has changed since the master, and then only run like certain commands within those packages. So, any questions? So.